OK, so we're going to pick up with section 78. Um, some of you will have already done this. Uh, I think some of you were away, um, but it's a good recap anyway, because it's the beginning of the second section of the text. Um, so it's a nice place to start from. Um, Cicero is going to talk about Antony and his relationship with Caesar in a little more detail um, and is hopefully going to manage to discredit him uh, through the um, relationship that the two of them had. So he starts off um, rather annoyingly with this little abbreviation. Um, C, as I'm sure we know, stands for Gaius, can stand for Caius as well. Um, here, obviously, it stands for Gaio because it's in the dative and agreeing with Caesari. So, Gaio Caesari, ex Hispania Rediunti Obviam Longissimo Processisti. Um, the implied subject is Antony, um, with the U on the end of the Processisti. Um, so we'll start with that. Procasisti, you proceeded, you advanced, you know, uh, and you advanced longissime, you know, uh, very far, you know, the furthest, but very far is probably best here. Um, and then you've got this slightly irritating adverb, obviam, uh, which really uh, can only be reflected using the verb to meet in English. You know. So you advanced very far to meet, uh, and then that takes a dative, so that's where the dative of Gaio Kaisari comes in. At the beginning, um, you advanced very far to meet Caesar, um, and then ex Hispania Redeunti uh, is a phrase which is describing Caesar using the present participle Redeunti, which also is in the dative. So you advanced very far to meet Caesar as he returned, while he returned, when he was returning, ex Hispania from Hispania from Spain. Uh, there's a note on Caesar's time in Spain. Um, in the uh, in the commentary which I've provided to you, uh, so do read that uh, and do feel free to research a little bit about Caesar's time in Spain um, if you wish. Uh, it might become useful. Okay, so you advanced very far to meet Caesar as he returned from Spain, um, and then Cicero uses a couple of verbs in quick succession: calerite isti, redisti. Um, Isti uh, is ao. Uh, you you went you went calerite. You went quickly, uh, and then redisti. You returned. Um, no conjunction here, but you'll probably need to provide one in English. So just a little bit of a syndeton there for you. Um, and I would be inclined to imply the calerite with the redisti as well. So you went quickly, and you returned quickly. Ut cognoscaret te si minus fortem at tamen strenuum. Um, purpose calls beginning with ut, so so that he might recognise, so that he might understand. And then that introduces a kind of accusative and infinitive style phrase, although there's no infinitive here with it. You're going to need to imply probably the verb to be, or you could get away just by saying as, so that he might recognise you as fortem, a brave man. You know, or he might recognise that you were a brave man. And then you've got the C minus in the middle, which qualifies it, so that he might recognise that even if you were less brave, you know, uh, or he might recognise you as if less brave a man. That's slightly clunky in English, so I think so. I'd probably go with the verb, but he might recognise that even if you were a less brave man at Tamin, at Tamin together combined here means something like nevertheless, literally, obviously, but however. So he might recognise that even if you were a less brave man, nevertheless, strenuum. Uh, and strenuum uh, obviously gives us the English word strenuous, but active, vigorous, energetic, something like that. So that nevertheless, you were an active man. He moves on uh, to talk about the, uh, the, the beginnings of their relationship. Again, factus A's a rursus nescio quomodo familiaris. Uh, factus A's um, can either be from facio. Uh, or it can be from Fio. In this instance, I think it's got to be from Fio because Facio, you were made, would not make an awful lot of sense here um, in English, you know, regardless, really. Um, so factors as I would take as you became. Uh, and then the adjective following on from that is familiaris right at the end of the phrase. So you were, uh, sorry, you became familiaris intimate. Uh, and then you've got rursus in the middle here. So you became intimate again. Uh, and then you've got a in the dative. Um, so literally intimate to him, but I would suggest intimate with him in English is better. And then this small phrase in the middle, just qualifying Cicero's thoughts on that. Nescio quo modo, I don't know how. So you became intimate with him again. I'm not sure how. 
he then talks about Caesar's qualities uh, a little bit, um, and in doing so, uh, hopes to discredit Antony, um, or at least slur Antony some more. Habibat hoc omnino Kaiser. Um, habibat is a tricky verb sometimes. Uh, it usually obviously means to have. It can mean to hold or to keep as well. Um, habibat hoc literally means something like sort of he kept this. Um, and in this instance, it's being used to describe the, the the way in which Caesar behaved. So he had this habit, he kept this trait, you know, um, you could just simplify it and say something like, you know, uh, this was Caesar's way, you know, or something, something along those lines. But Caesar had this trait, and then this is qualified again by Omnino. Caesar absolutely, altogether, certainly had this trait. Um, there's a small hint here in the modern editorial that you've got this colon which sits after Caesar, um, which implies, I know you shouldn't rely on the modern editorial because it wasn't there in the original, but uh, which implies that whatever comes after it is going to explain the uh, statement before. This is uh, sometimes a useful little hint um, when you're approaching translation that an editor has very kindly put a colon in there for you. So Caesar altogether absolutely had this trait um quam plane perditum ire alieno egentem quae si eundem nequam hominem audacemque cognorat hunc in familiaritatem libentissime recipiebat okay so it starts with this accusative phrase at the beginning quam uh, sorry quem plane perditum you know um this obviously is going to become the object uh, later on in the phrase but for the moment we'll deal with it as it stands so quem plane perditum um quem uh a man who, a man whom, actually, if it's going to be accusative, yeah. uh, plane, plainly, clearly, obviously. So, a man whom, uh, a, a man whom, plainly, perditum, ruined. And then, ire alieno. Uh, this is a phrase which we've had before. Um, uh, ice alienus means uh, bronze belonging to another person. Um, so, it's... Uh, it's a, a, the phrase which is used standard um, in in uh, in the Roman world to mean debt. So, a man who was plainly ruined by debt, um, and then further qualified with egentemque. Uh, egentem really means much the same thing. Um, it's the participle, you know, being needy. So, a man who was clearly ruined by debt and was in need. Si eundem nequam hominem audacem quae cognorat, uh, if cognorat, yeah, um, cognorat uh, is a contracted form, uh, it's cognowerat, uh, so if he had recognized, uh, referring to Caesar, so this is Caesar's trait, if he had recognized eundem, um, this is obviously from idem, yeah, the same man but is in the accusative, so if he recognized this same man, nequem hominem, uh, you're going to need a verb to be again, was a nequem hominem, you know, uh, a worthless or good for nothing man, and then audacem quae, and bold, hunc in familiaritatem libentissime recipiebat, he would receive hunk, he would receive this man. So the hunk at the beginning uh, is the same person as the quem, up here so you can take it you know um, in the order that it comes if you want to yeah you know, and then sort of hook it on using the recipe bat later on um, or you could take the recipe a bat first you know he would receive any man who was clearly ruined by debt and in need if he recognized or if he had recognized literally this same man uh, this same man to be worthless and bold Hunk in familiaritatem libentisme, eagerly he would receive him into his intimacy, into his friendship. Um, he's contrasting the, the the characteristics that one might hope for um, in the C minus fortem at tamen strenuum up here. You know, um, the, the sort of positive sense of of uh, fortis et strenuus. You know, somebody who is brave or strong and active. You know. Um, Cicero only ascribes one of those characteristics to Antony up here um, and then contrasts that sort of sense of, you know, brave and, and active, vigorous with the audacem um, and the nequam uh, over here, you know, uh, calling Antony uh, worthless and audacem bold. Bold sounds like it could be a positive thing, uh, 
but I think here it means here almost sort of sort of reckless almost. You know, he's he's somebody who is who is up for almost anything. Um, and the idea is that although we're talking about Caesar here um, and saying you know. Uh, he will take on anybody who you know, freely he'll take on anybody into his into his sort of friendship circle if that man is ruined with debt and you know and, and sort of reckless um the thing is obviously the person we're talking about is anthony you know who is a who is a leading politician so um by talking about caesar cicero manages to ascribe those qualities to him without even really mention without without mentioning his name at all in this passage OK, uh, we'll pick up next time with uh, section 79. But in the meantime, uh, I hope that's useful.